the most disastrous mistake ever and I'm so sad and now I feel like I'm behind. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily where I talk about all sorts of fun crafty goodness, mostly knitting, sometimes cross stitch. Hasn't been cross stitch in a while though, so I just have knitting for you today. But yeah, this is my channel where I talk about everything that I've been up to craft wise. There are a few places you can find me on the internet, the main being birchandlilyfiber.com. You can also find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily. And anywhere else that you can find me, everything I talk about, all of that is always linked down below in the description of this video. One other quick announcement before we get started, the Special Skein Cal 2023 that I was running with Carson of Carsley Handmade did end on June 10th. We have drawn the winners and we've contacted them through Instagram. So so check your message request just in case you were a winner. But we did have two winners that won project bags with skeins of yarn. Uh, this here is from Songbird Handmade. It was so kindly donated. Um, and then I'm adding a skein of yarn along with it. And then we also did have some digital prizes as well. So yeah, check out your inbox on Instagram if you did enter to see if there's a message sitting there for you. Thank you so much to everyone who did join us. Carson and I had such a fun time. It was so cool to see all of your projects on Instagram. I'll make sure the hashtag for the Cal is down below in the description. If you're interested in looking through and seeing what people made, there was over a hundred posts, lots of posts, lots of entries. It was so much fun. Thank you so much for joining us. I know I may not have cast anything on because I got distracted. Granted, everything I have cast on is using special yarn. And actually, technically, a project I'm showing today is using a whole bunch of special single skeins. So we'll call that my somewhat sad entry. <laughs> Anyways, we'll stop the rambling, we'll stop the announcements, let's jump on into the regular podcast. I do have a finished object that I'm wearing to show you. This is my resource raglan. I just finished this up oh, a couple days ago. This is a pattern coming very soon from Sarah Opie. It's basically a full pattern with, I think, four or five different gauges and all sorts of different ways you can modify the pattern to make your own perfect reglan. Um, so what I ended up doing was the ribbed v-neck, uh, double stitch reglan, and then I did a split hem and normal sleeves, like a tighter fitting normal sleeve with decreases and a cuff, normal cuff. I did bind everything off, obviously, other than this neckline here with um, an Italian bind off. And I'm really, really happy with it. So let me stand up. I'm not 100% sure on the release date of this yet. It should be within the next couple weeks. Um, but this is my version. So I really, really love the fit show this to you quickly and then I will um, come closer again and talk more about sizing and stuff but I'm really pleased with the split hem. I don't know. I just think it's the perfect cozy fitted sweater. So what I did with this I knit the size 8. I believe the pattern goes from size 1 to 22 so there's a ton of options. I knit the size 8 and that gives me about two inches of positive ease. I'm really happy with the fit of it. The sleeves are perfect. I think they hit at the perfect spot as well, like right, right below my wrist. Um, and still, then they don't get too baggy with my Fitbit on this wrist. So yeah, really happy with that. I think the size eight was the perfect size decision, um, but there's so many options. Like I could have technically chosen a larger size and then did A-line shaping on it. There's that option, there's bust darts. There are so many options with this pattern that it's kind of overwhelming, but like in a good way, I think a person just needs to sit down and read the pattern like a day or two before you're ready to cast on so that you make sure you haven't missed anything because I feel like I missed options. I knew I wanted to do a v-neck 
So like that's what I started with. But then as I was going, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then suddenly I had like a whole bunch of different options of sweaters in my mind that one day I would probably like to do. So I think it's a really cool pattern in that way. I've never seen anything like it. It's set up in a PDF format where like there's links you can click to get to different portions of the pattern. I don't know. I won't, I won't go into it too much because um, I don't want to give tons away, but I feel like it's literally like uh, an encyclopedia <laughs> for knitting a, a raglan sweater. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, one of my favorite things, which I don't know if I've ever shown close on the podcast, and of course my camera's going to blow out because it does that, um, but the way the v-neck is connected I think is really, really neat. Um, the only other garment I've seen that does something like this is the Moonset tee and pullover from Ozetta, and I just really like how it looks. So I might have to knit a moon set sometime soon. And otherwise, yeah, construction was really easy. Instructions were great. I feel like I picked a good fit. Did I say what yarn I knit this out of? I don't know if I did. Uh, <laughs> this is from my shop, Birch and Lily Fiber Co. This is Birch DK, which is 100% superwash merino. And the colorway is marvelous. And I feel like it's marvelous. <laughs> I just, I'm really happy with how the speckles came out on this colorway. It's so much fun to knit like a full garment out of my colorways as opposed to just a swatch because I feel like a swatch really doesn't show the full picture where like a garment, this really shows how everything works throughout it. So really pleased with this. Obviously it's getting much too warm to wear this right now. So this is going to have to unfortunately go away for a little while. Um, but I'm really pleased with it and I'm excited for months down the road. I'm happy with the warm weather right now. Don't get me wrong, but I'm excited to be able to wear this in the fall again too. So yeah, really great finished object. I still haven't taken photos of it. I need to do that, um, but I'm glad it's done. Other than that, I really only have well, I have three projects I'm working on, but one is a secret sample knit that I cannot show. Um, so I have two projects to show you. One you haven't seen in a while. I've been enjoying it. Second one had the most disastrous mistake ever, and I'm so sad, and now I feel like I'm behind. <laughs> and it's a mess. So we might as well jump on in. Let's start with the good one first, I guess. This is my heirloom quilt cardigan. This bag here is, oh gosh, I always forget, Wool and Honey. This is from Wool and Honey, and it's a huge bag because I am using, I'll grab a couple. I won't hold them all because there's so many in here, but endless, ooh, as the bag tries to run away from me, endless amounts of fingering white yarn skeins held double. The pattern does call for fingering weight held double, um, or you can use a DK, but I kind of like the effect that the fingering held double is giving. And this is my heirloom quilt cardigan. So I am testing this for Katrin Seaburger and I'm getting somewhere on it now. I feel like I'm finally making progress. Um, I've been putting in about two squares a night and I say that and I've really only started working on it last night, so I've only put in two squares since I last showed this a while ago, but I feel like doing two squares a night will make this go very quickly. So this here is gonna be this front panel, and then this is under the sleeves. So then uh, now the next two that I'm gonna connect, I won't connect to the rest of this fabric so that I can put the sleeves in there and do some other stuff. Um, but yeah, this pattern I'm testing for Katrin Seaburger, and I won't go into all the yarn because, yeah, there's there's too much in it. <laughs> um, I'm knitting everything to pattern, except I did ask if I could do join as you go for my squares. The pattern does call to knit them individually and then connect them together after you've blocked them, but I wanted to, there's the back side, join them as I went just to save a little bit of seaming, um, and I'm glad I did that. Here's my floats. This is the first time I've done intarsia. Um, it's got a mix of color work and intarsia in it. 
and some of these are blocked, some are not. But once they block out, I'm really happy with how it's laying. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but nothing anyone but myself would see. So, yeah. Um, I will say the gauge is maybe a little bit loose for my liking. Um, but when I block it, I'm going to make sure I really, really am conscious about not stretching it. And I think that should be fine. Um, otherwise, yeah, really fun to play with color and just kind of, I don't know, it's satisfying to finish one whole block and then be like, oh, okay, let's move on to the next one and let's pick the colors for the next one. So I'm having a hard time deciding what I want to put here in this next block, but I'll figure it out. I feel like maybe, hmm, holding it up on screen might help. I don't know, what feels like it's missing? <laughs> I don't know what's missing there. Maybe something lighter? Though, now that I'm holding it up here, I'm almost thinking something darker, like another dark blue with the dark blue on the outside. Yeah, I think that's what I might end up doing. And then I don't know what color I'll do for the actual, like, quilt star. But, yeah enjoying this a lot. I'm doing, there's three sizes in the pattern. I'm making the second size and I am lengthening it by one row of these blocks. It does call for only three, but I did not, if I stand up here, three would have been way too cropped on me. So I feel like this is a good length because there'll be some ribbing added on the bottom and then it should hit about the length of the sweater I'm wearing right now. So very fun knit. I'm glad I can finally get back to this one, that I finally have time for it. And yeah, like I said, my goal, I'm kind of, <laughs> once I show you the mistake I made, you'll understand why, but I'm kind of scheduling out my knitting now. So I want to get two blocks on this done every day, an hour or so done on my sample knit that I cannot show you. And then an hour or so done on the next project I'm going to show you. So I think scheduling that out will get me kind of back on track and I'll be good to go. And to be honest, I don't mind having a bit of a schedule. So I'm not sitting there like, I don't know what I want to make. What should I make? What should I do? It's just like, you must do all of these three things. So pick one and go with it. So yeah, that is my heirloom quilt cardigan. I'm pleased to be working on it again. Um, I don't know if I've talked about... Let's go back to this. <laughs> There's something else I want to say. I do not know if I have said, so I have like all these quilt blocks and then the pattern calls to have like two different colored sleeves and then all the ribbing matching. Um, but I had three skeins of this Woolberry Fiber Co here in the colorway Glisten. And so I have one that I am putting into the quilt blocks and then I have two saved for the sleeves. Um, I just wanted to make sure for sure, for sure I had enough to do both sleeves in the same color. So yeah, I've got two of these waiting, but I'm not too worried. I think I should have plenty. The other project that I had the massive oopsie with is my Mayberry cardigan that I am testing for Amy Loudon. Two days ago, I had this totally ready to split for the sleeves. And then as I was about to split for the sleeves, I realized my one sleeve had way too many stitches. And I looked closely at it and realized I had added a rogue increase way at the beginning, way at the beginning. If you look at my Instagram post I made on this, you can actually see it, which makes me even more grumpy because I took those photos and looked at them and made them color correct and didn't even notice my extra increase. So, I ripped all of this out. I couldn't leave it. I couldn't do it. It bothered me. I saw it every single time I looked at it. So I ripped it all the way back and now I'm very behind, which is not ideal, but uh, I'm gonna make it work. So this stitch marker is not accurate to where I was because I think I'm even further back than I was last time. Uh, <laughs> but here is my Mayberry cardigan, which I love so much that I will keep working on it. I will finish this test in time. I made a commitment and I will do it. But 
yeah, this was heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't go into, into it too much because no one needs to hear my tale of woe of not paying attention and counting my stitches. Let's just say I have made a chart for myself of stitch counts every time I do an increase and I'm going to be checking that very often throughout my knitting process. But yeah, my poor May Cardigan had to have surgery. Now I'm proud of myself for figuring out how to rip out Fisherman's Rib, get it back on my needles and like not have any weird rogue stitches or funny stuff because for a while there I was scared I was gonna have to rip the whole thing out and restart because I was like I don't know how to do this like I don't know how to pick up stitches or whatever so I pulled out my needles and I started ripping back and then I kind of looked at it and I was like I think I can figure this out and I did so I'm proud of myself for that and I'm not going to give up <laughs> I'm gonna keep going I want this so badly and I don't want to like back out on my commitment to Amy because that's not fair either. Um, this is my fault, not hers. It had nothing to do with the pattern. It had everything to do with me not paying attention. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's not tons of progress to show on this for that reason. There's like no progress to show on this for that reason, but it will happen. Um, so this is on my Birch DK base, the 100% Superwash Merino. I'm not sharing the name of this colorway yet because it's a new one and I don't want to give away the collection. <laughs> um, but yes, this will be coming soon. Um, and this beautiful Progress Keeper from Denim and Rain makes me feel a lot better <laughs> every time I pull it out. Um, I feel much less sad when I stare at the sheep. So my plan is, like I said, at least an hour on this a day. Um, I, I can do it. <laughs> I'm going to be carrying knitting around with me everywhere. I'm going to drive my husband bonkers. Granted, he's used to me knitting everywhere, but it's going to be like, hey, we're sitting and eating at a restaurant. I'm pulling out my knitting because I need to get this done. <laughs> so that is, that is that. Um, like I said, not tons of progress, but I will do it. I will. I'm, you, you can help hold me accountable that I will do this. Um, this beautiful bag is from Jenna Rose Handmade. I love it. I'm almost considering making this my travel knitting bag because it has like a long shoulder strap. Um, and then I can just take whatever project I need to be working on during the day in this because I'm obviously not going to be working on um, my muscle bear hat or anything like that because I just don't have the time for that at the moment. So this might become my travel knitting bag. Not that I leave the house that much, <laughs> but yeah, I, I will do it. I love that cardigan too much to leave it behind. I did want to show you one other thing. Um, I have some yarn wound up for another project. You're going to say, Amanda, what the heck? Another test knit. You're behind. What are you doing? I signed up for this ages ago um, when I was still on schedule. So again, I made a commitment. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it happen. Um, but I am going to be testing the Brooklyn Raglan Light for Tori U. Um, and I'm just doing the t-shirt version. Thank goodness, because <laughs> I don't have the time to knit some long sleeves right now. But I wound up this beautiful color from Woolberry Fiber Co. And of course, I can't remember what it's called. Conch. Um, so it's like a creamy yellow with how would I describe this? Like grasshoppery green and some pinks and oranges. It's really beautiful and I think it will make a beautiful tea. Um, I thankfully don't have to gauge swatch for this one because I literally not that long ago knit a project with the exact same gauge and the exact same yarn base so I can just get this started which I'm happy about, but I want to get a lot further on these other projects before I do. Um, I still have quite a bit of time until this is due. Um, but this beautiful bag is also from Denim and Rain. Um, and I love it. I think it's beautiful. I love the little handle on it, the drawstrings. I don't know. Very well made. It's super cute. So I wanted to show that off. And then I think... I think that's everything I have for this episode. Like I said, it was going to be a shorter one because I'm really honing in and focusing on a couple projects, but 
is what it is. I can't always have five or six projects to show. That's just unreasonable. So I had been working monogamously on this resource raglan and now I've got the two thing, three things, I guess, that I'm working on. Not monogamously, but enough. I don't know. So <laughs> that's where I'm at with that. Um, you can tell I'm saving as much time as I can. I didn't even do my hair. I did my makeup, but I didn't do my hair. I brushed it. Brushed my hair, brushed my teeth put some makeup on and I was like, okay, people don't care that much about what I look like. They're here for the knitting anyways. So <laughs> that's where I'm at with that. But yeah, um, thank you again for joining with this special skein Cal 2023. It was so cool to see so many people join in with Carson and I, and it just, it made my heart very happy to see all of you knitting along with us. And yeah, it was so much fun. We'll definitely have to continue to do that every year. It was very special. Um, and then I think next week is going to be a special video. I have to double check with uh, Sarah Opie that it's okay with her, but I did film the whole process of knitting this resource raglan. So if she is good with me putting the video of that up, I have all the, the footage put into my editing software. I just have to actually do it. So if she's good with that going live, that's what's going to be going live next week is a how long it takes me to knit a sweater video, which was actually really fun to film. So there's that. And what else? I think that's about it. Um, yeah. If you liked what you saw today, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel a lot and it makes me happy to, <laughs> to see so many people enjoying my content. I really appreciate you being here, especially if you show up every week. It means the world to me. And I will see you again next week. Bye! Yeah.